first thing to learn is you. Without you, there is no external learning. There has to be a you first. There has to be something that you're firm about, your identity, your personality, your character. There has to be something for education to work with. But at five, four, six years old, this is not the case. The case is you come as what they call a blank tablet. Philosophy, tabula rasa. You come as a blank thing, you just, I'm here. And instead of the teacher asking you, what do you want to do with your life? The teacher says, this is what you're going to do with your life. Here's the, here's the plan. You can study math, English, science, you know, history, or social studies, based on where you at. You need to study all, but nothing on the list about you. Everything you're studying is external. Now, why am I saying this to you? Because hip hop scholarship goes right up against it. <laughs> here's the oldest, here's, here's this first stop. I'm five years old, I'm trying to learn something, I'm in this school, the first thing that's taken away from me is my intelligence. Why? Because what I'm being trained for is to respond reflexively to the commands of God. That's what I mean, just with education. You're being trained to respond reflexively. Come here, yes sir. <coughs> respond reflexively to the commands of Thought. That's education. Knowledge. What your grandmother knows about you, what your mom's went through to have your journey to your college or higher learning. What about you? Your, your sign, your Leo, or this or that. But what's your name? How did you get your name? What, what do you mean? That's knowledge. Knowing, knowing, knowledge, knowing. There's no knowing out there. All knowing is in me. But knowledge is not intelligence. Intelligence is the ability to know. It's not knowing. It's the ability to know. Let me go slowly. <laughs> Education is training. Knowledge is awareness of yourself. But intelligence, intelligence is even outside of words. Let me give you an example. So I have knowledge. I am aware. I'm not just educated. I know myself. Okay. Now here's the next part. What self do you actually know? What is it that knows the self? Here's another piece of it. In knowledge, I am called a black man in knowledge. I am aware I am a black man in knowledge. Now here's intelligence. But when I look at myself, I'm actually brown. <laughs> My knowledge tells me that you're a black man. My intelligence says, ah, you're a friend. Go deeper. You're a human. Where does your intelligence start and stop? Once you control a person's education, you can control their intelligence. Once you control their intelligence, you control their reality. Intelligence deals with your perception, how you see your world, how you respond to your world. Intelligence uses knowledge to navigate the world. So if you're over here being educated to respond reflexively to authority, anything somebody in authority tells you to do, you jump up and do it even if it's wrong. You say, I'm just going to do it because that's how I was trained. Why? Because I want the A, the B, the C grade. 
or I want the fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollar job. I want the hundred thousand dollar. Same situation. I'm being trained to be a better employee. Okay, if that's who you are, then that's who you are. It's all love, but it's not hip hop. Now hip hop is a little different. First, we went through education, knowledge, and intelligence. Intelligence is like a sight. When you have a keen intelligence, you can see stuff that other people can't see. When you have knowledge of yourself, you can become things that people can't become. When you have a good education, you're trained for something. Whatever you can do. But hip hop is even beyond that. What is hip hop? Hip means to know. Hip, the word hip means to know. It is a form of intelligence. Hip. This word. Hip comes from the word hippie, an <coughs> African word. Believe it comes from the Wolof tribe of Africa, ancient. Hip was originally called hippie cat. And a hippie cat, hip, a hippie cat, was someone who says, they say, when you're a hip cat or a hippie cat, your eyes are open. You are aware of your environment. This word, hippie cat, Became the word hip and the word hep in the English language. It retained its same meaning, meaning one whose eyes are open, but when you go to the Oxford English today, it says someone that is keenly aware of what is new and in style. But the word keenly aware is what you have to focus on. This word hip, H, it means being aware. Aware of yourself, aware of your environment, knowledge, awareness. Hop is a movement. Hop is a springing upward, leaping forward. Kangaroos hop, birds hop, humans walk, other animals, cheese. Hop is a springing upward. Hip is a keen awareness. Look at me. Hip hop, a keen awareness. Lifting, move, jumping up, lifting, leaping forward. Moving by successive hops. So if you want to know how hip hop moves, it hops. It doesn't actually walk, it leaps. Being a keen awareness that's moving. When you say, I am hip hop, what you're actually saying is, I am aware of my movement. I know why I move. I don't move just because somebody told me to. <laughs> I move because I want to. Even if you ask me to move, I still must approve that with my hands. Even if I am helping you, even if I am your slave, I still must approve that condition first for myself. Hip, I am aware. Ha, I move on that awareness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Intelligence moving, consciousness moving. I am aware of my movements. I know why I move. That is the beginning of it. Now let's get into the thing. Most nations are created by invasion. Most modern, industrialized nations, most of Europe, uh, most of Africa, uh, most nations. 
uh, are basically created by invasion and conquest. Uh, <coughs> because of this, and I'll just narrow this down to the United States, but you can really put this around the world, but just in the United States alone, the invasion, see, let me go back, let me go back. It, as Americans, we don't feel like we are invaders, but we are. We don't feel like occupiers, but we are. This is not your land. <laughs> we are here. <laughs> we are here. If you just, we're talking. The, you know, this is real citizenry we are talking to. There's no finger pointing, and I'm not blaming anyone for anything. But here's the truth. <laughs> Americans are occupiers in a foreign land. Most, most westernized education, and i got to put the West on this. <laughs> most westernized education is the product of a far of a colonizer being in a place that they are not supposed to be at, but they're setting up shop in these foreign areas. So when you create an educational system for the population that you are colonizing, you are only going to train them to work for you. You're not going to, to you don't care about their culture. You don't care about their history. In fact, you're trying to destroy it. At every moment you get, you're destroying their monuments, burning their books. Why? Because you're here. You're trying to push aside the old way and establish your new way. This is colonialism at its center. A colonial education takes from its students the subjective reality. Underline the word subjective reality that all of us have to deal with every single day to live, to survive, to think, to work, to do anything, we do it subjectively. We don't do it objectively. In other words, you can't sit, you can't, you, you can't say I'm, uh, I'm a rapper and never rap. You can't say, um, you know, uh, oh, ooh, let me even go, let me give you a good example of objectivity. Take the the, uh, the film Twelve Years. Check one, two, check. Oh, I got a mic. <laughs> 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 so real right there. Um, does the, does does this mean that I could be recorded as well? No, yeah, I like it. I like it. Like it. <laughs> <laughs> turn that on. Um, okay, well, great. This is good. <clears throat> Put a delay on. No. <laughs> uh, subjective learning is a problem for a colonizer's educational system. You gotta know this. If I am foreign to your land, I can't teach you nothing about yourself or the land in which we're standing upon. The educational model then is objectivity. Objectivity rules. The objective observer, the one who stands on the outside of the subject, is deemed more credible than the subject itself. Now, we have to stop. <laughs> because this is the crux, and you have to make up your mind about this. And when I enter something, when I, when I look when I look to become knowledgeable about something, do I learn it from a distance? Do, do I learn it from a distance like it's me here and I know who I am? And I'm going to learn this. I'm never going to become it. I'm never going to see it. I'm never going to. But it's a book, a DVD, there's television, there's the internet, there's something I can learn about this thing. And so I learn about it. But I myself never become it. Now, this goes way back to 
when ancient people used to learn, before colonialism, before the colonization of people, before all of that, people learned subjectively, meaning that you became the knowledge you wanted to know. This is nature's order of how knowledge is distributed amongst humanity. Everybody can't do everything. Everyone is not meant to do everything. There are people born for astronomy, born for it, grew up, looked at the stars, and said, I know exactly what they're saying. No toy, no nothing. Not. There are people that are born to cook. You throw scraps at them, they whip it up together, and suddenly it's this. People born to fix cars, good with mechanics, never taught nothing. This is how nature teaches. Nature gives you a talent that nobody else has. Some people may have the talent, like it's a, it's just a bunch of car mechanics. But each human being is unique in the way that that skill is going to be presented. There's a billion rappers, but I'm the greatest one. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My point is, there's a lot, there are many of what we are doing, but there is only one doer of it. And you are unique in that way, and nature understood this early, early on. It was, imagine, you have a family. And there are other families in, in, in this society. We're all families in this society. I say five families. One family, for some reason, can build houses like you can't believe. For some reason, they understand architecture. And by the way, architecture <coughs> is natural to humanity. You don't have to go to school for that. If you really want to know architecture, know your science. This is one of the, this is one of nature's sciences. Like astronomy, nature sciences, like medicine and healing. This all comes from nature. Man did not create none, any of it. Go back to the subject of learning. Back in the days when the ancients wanted to learn, they became the knowledge. You was either born a certain way, and the elder of your way could have been from another family, say, you know, they come back to the house. So this family could build a house. But this family can't really cook. In fact, this family doesn't even have enough time to cook. All they do is build houses. There's another family over here that uh, is master chefs. In fact, they are the healers because in ancient times, the one who cooked the food was the doctor. There was no separation between the chef and the doctor. The chef and the, you ate from the doctor in your community. That's why in Roman, in, in Roman times, the average person lived to 33 years. But in Africa, the average person lived to 120 years. So get this. This is why the early Romans thought Africans were immortal. This is why they were called God. Because Europeans never saw them die. Europeans were dying, 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 and Africans were living to 120 years. Why? Because they were subjectively eating, not objectively eating. They were getting their food from the shaman priests who said, eat this on Monday, eat that on Tuesday, eat this on Wednesday, and on Thursday you'll see God. They followed the instructions, saw God. And when I say see God, this I'm not going to get into this lecture now. Maybe you have to bring me back. But the point is, is that the origins of knowledge begins with drug use. No one's going to say that. But take words in like peyote, ayahuasca. Take these, these words and then do the research on these so-called drugs. And it, they are illegal in the United States, by the way. Ayahuasca, you can ingested ritualistically in Peru and South America, even in India now as well. But in the United States, it is illegal, just so you know. But the point of the matter is that these mind-altering substances 
is the birth of knowledge itself. Humanity it didn't come up with knowledge. Knowledge was discovered by ingesting certain plants and herbs. The story is told in um, uh, the Genesis story, Adam and Eve. Um, Eve, you know, goes through the forest and looking around for something to eat, pops this fruit in her mouth, and they say her eyes were open. Now, of course, she already saw the fruit. <laughs> so what eye did <laughs> the Bible talk about was open? It was her mind. It was her consciousness. And by the way, it said also in that story that 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 uh, the serpent, another ancient symbol of what is called the Nada, the Nada, the serpent, the Pharaoh of Egypt has the same Nada on the head. The Buddha is surrounded by the same Nadas, seven Nadas. They come out of Hindu religion, actually, the Nada. But and see, I'm going into that lecture. I don't want to go into that lecture. <laughs> but my point here is, and, and, and let me, and, 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 and wait a minute, let me just stay here just for one hot minute on this. The Bible says that women, the Bible says that anyone who ate this fruit would become like God, knowing good and evil. And the first one to eat the fruit was women. Now, it's not part of this particular lecture, but I just would say to women in this room here today, that one of the reasons why women don't become what they want to be in their life is because we are imitating or they are imitating men a little too much mentally. There is a woman species that is not yet being lived by women. There is another woman, ah, Lucy. <laughs> Okay, I, I must not really talk about it. <laughs> There's just another woman that throughout history has been the lead of humanity. Men learn from what? Their mothers. Dad is not the teacher of the household. That's a new concept in humanity. Women are the teachers. In the Hindu faith, it is said that if the, if the woman is corrupt, the whole family is. It's like, you say, the brother could be corrupt. <laughs> the sister could be corrupt. The father could be corrupt. <laughs> but if the mother is corrupted, meaning, and when they say corrupted, meaning not virtuous, not living according to her higher self, the whole family suffers. Everybody, and for generations and generations and generations, you suffer. Why? Because the female principle hasn't been honored by the people. Women are saying men should honor the principle. You're right, but it's you that got to honor it first. And a lot of women are not taking the responsibility of being the leaders of humanity. Do you realize that not the genome has been decoded, supposedly? They now discover that the whole history of humanity, the genetic history of humanity, all of the whole history, the whole genetic history of humanity is only in women. They say it's in men and women, but only women can pass it on to other women. So the whole genetic history of humanity itself is the woman, not. In her, it, it, the, her female DNA is the history of humanity. It is the history, not coded in. It's the, the history of humanity is not coded in it. The history of humanity is <coughs> the women walking, sitting in this room. This is to harm a woman means you are harming the history of all of humanity. Every woman has the history of the entire human being in her. And it's passed on from mother to mother to mother to mother, or daughter, mother, daughter, daughter, mother, passed on. So men, if you want to continue your lineage, you gotta have a daughter. If a man wants to continue, then he must have a queen. This is the ancient Egyptian concept 
of the Pharaoh being the king, but having no power whatsoever <laughs> until he sat down in the throne. The throne was female. The throne was Isis. He was Horus. He, he was the Christ child. He was in the bosom of the great mother. Why do I mention this? Because when you're studying, if you cannot show on to your mother, and we have some crazy mothers too, by the way. <laughs> so I'm not talking about your mother. <laughs> Although I am on another level, yes, I am talking about your mother. I'm talking about being patient with your parents. Yes. But in this conversation, the female principle, men that want to be hip-hop scholars, the first thing you have to get in touch with is the female principle. Why is this important? Because real hip-hop was raised by women. We were raised at a time when dad wasn't there. For whatever reason, dad wasn't there. Hundreds of us, you pick up any hot album, any of your top stars, guarantee they had some family friends. What ended up when I had to stay with grandma, had to stay with my aunt, had to stay with my mom. It was just me and her. Go even deeper just into the history of hip-hop. You can look this up online, which I'm not going to get into it. But the history of hip-hop starts with a guy named Cool DJ Herb, 1973 in the Bronx. Well, what caused Cool DJ Herc to start playing in the breaks of records? It was his sister. His sister Cindy, who was his older sister, by the way. She had a birthday party and said, Herc, can you come out and DJ for my party? He said, sure. He came out and DJ and hip hop together. You must show respect with these words to the feminine principle. And it's important because no scholar is going to tell you that. Because they don't regard this as real knowledge. They regard it as sodom or whatever it is. But it's, it's unimportant to respect the woman in this educational mind. It's unimportant. It's not important to respect women in your scholarship. That's not important. So to be a hip hop scholar, the first thing you gotta rec recognize is my mother is the lead here. My father gets respect, no doubt. I have a whole lecture on fathers. We can get into that, but that's not the point here. The point here is mothers. Mothers, you wanna birth your career. You want to birth a new life. Everything about creativity and creation and starting something from nothing begins with women. Now, having said that, come back to what I was talking about with colonization. Colonization hates women. <laughs> Anytime somebody lands in your country or lands in your house or lands in your community, the first thing they have to get rid of is your moms. They can actually get rid of your dad. They can actually like that. Then they say, yeah, you okay, dad, dad's gonna fight, dad's gonna, your dad has dad. Don't touch my mother. <laughs> Don't say that my moms. Every, every tribe on earth, it don't matter what language you speak, it don't matter, don't talk about my mother. <laughs> don't matter where you are. This is natural to humanity. And why is that? Because nature gives you that. Nature says the true ruler is her right there. If you're going to be a scholar of the hip hop arts and sciences, first show respect to your mother. Of course, you show respect to all, to all of your parents because that gets into ancestry and how you're going to help them beyond the grave. I'm not going to go there yet. But the ancestors are working. All your parents are important, their grandparents and so forth. But just as intellectual scholars, we'll just say, from, an into, from a keen understanding first, the feminine principle. Now how is this? What does mom do? How does mom approach me is how I'm going to approach my career. I'll say it again. These are the secrets. 
Take it in. The way mom approaches me is the way I am going to approach my career. What did mom do? Okay. And look at this, because this knowledge is going to come out 10 or 20 years from now. You'll get it now. Thank you. Woo! Time flies, does it? That, I'll, I'll put a period on this and then summarize. And she just made me think about that by new summary. Uh, I'll say this. Because I, I do have comments and I do want to take questions and answer them. Uh, this is a long election. I can go on. Let me, let me say this about femininity as well. Let's come back to that. Again, like I said, but what, what I wanted to say was the importance of recognizing women first is because if you don't treat your career like a child, like a mother having a child, you won't have it. You won't have it. Careers are, are living things. Your degree is not going to help your career. I'm not sure y'all know that. It helps you, it, it, you know, when you get to your graduation and they give you your receipt, I mean your degree. <laughs> <laughs> that some people have the same degree you have and can't do anything with right. it. Some people have the same degree. They're soaring around the planet with the same piece of paper. It's not the paper. It's not even your experience here. It's not that. It is who are you? What kind of person are you? And this is what I'm going to summarize real quickly in, 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 in five minutes because this is the, I'm skipping over like 40 years of, of history. We probably will have to come. In a nutshell, I'm going real fast. What hip hop teaches, in a nutshell, is a new way to think. Okay, new way to think. President Obama was just talking about the country needing to retool. Everything about America now is entrepreneurial. Fine, it's been a job. So now everybody's out. Yes, entrepreneur, entrepreneur, entrepreneur. But nobody's telling anybody the secrets of being an entrepreneur. Okay? Here's a couple of them right now. First of all, nobody makes it in this life without spiritual knowledge. Let's start right there. I'm going to put you on a homework assignment. The homework assignment is pick any of the major corporations, any, Walmart, any, Microsoft, any, any, pick any of these corporations you want to pick, guarantee you, the CEO and founder of that corporation is on his knees, on her knees. Pick them. I already did the research. That's why I'm saying. Pick, pick any of them. Call any, any of them. You do the research. Buy their book. Don't just go online. Buy their book. See their life story. Get into it. The heads of these companies, what did they do first? They submitted first to whatever they felt was divine. You want to get over the earth? You must deal with divinity. More and more each day, the state is trying to take God away from you because they know that's how you make it free. Anything the state taking away, they know they got some Look, and there's no, and there's no diss to the state. The state got to be the state, but you got to be you. If they take the Ten Commandments out of public places, where's yours up on your wall? Because without those Ten Commandments, there's no business, there's no nation, there's no community, there's nothing. It's just a bunch of individuals competing against each other. What God brings you, <laughs> now I sound preaching, but what God <laughs> brings you, this is serious, because serious, God must be a part of your career. Put that first. And first. Here's, here, here's how God helps you. First of all, you're never going to rip anybody off in the light of God. Therefore, you become trustworthy. When you become trustworthy, you become valuable. You're not hearing me. When you become trustworthy, people with stuff come at you. <laughs> they come at you. If you notice, People with nothing love being around people that are untrustworthy. I don't trust you, but that's my man. What? <laughs> no, you have to be 
become trustworthy. How do you become trustworthy? You have to reach the divinity. That's where virtue is. That's where principles are. That's, that, that's where you leap above the world and stand on top of it. Why? Because you're not in it. You're not operating on those walls. I tell you a secret, I'm going to have someone coming right now. Matter of fact, you know what? I'm going to bring light to this lady right here with the towel, okay? Come up on stage. Okay. No, no, no. Yeah, no, it's about you. Who is this lady right here with the hat, right? This is my darling wife of, of, of I don't know how many years. <laughs> Okay, this is it right here. Quick thing in the mouth. God. Okay, this is it. You look, did my story. Look up, look at my story. You'll see what it is. I started with nothing. Okay, 14 years old. I ran away from home. It wasn't an abusive home or anything. I just, I, I felt like I was around. I felt like I'm an MC. I'm telling you what I'm doing. So I left home at 14. Sometimes the police would catch me on the street. I'd be brought back home. I go back, I'm not in school, children officers running up on me, bring me back home. By the time I got to 17, I left, I used to live in Brooklyn, left Brooklyn, went across the Williamsburg Bridge, went to Manhattan. Now I'm in Manhattan. <laughs> no truant officers, nobody around, but I'm in Manhattan. Okay? I go to the, the shelter. Now, mind you, my mother taught me this. We didn't have no money, nothing. But the one thing she said was, Whatever it is you want to be in your life, visualize it now. See it now. Be it now. She said, we can't afford the car. You say, what car do you want? I want a Mercedes man. We ain't got money for nothing, okay? But I want a Mercedes man. She said, look, you really want it. Forget the Mercedes. Let's just go to the show. And look around. It's free to go to the show. Let's just look around. What most people do is they say, I want the Mercedes Benz. No, I'm never going to have that. All right, let's get back to work, Charlie. No, it's, I want the Mercedes Benz. Okay, first let me get near it. I, I can't afford it. I have nothing. <laughs> but let me get near it. Let me just get in the showroom. Look in the showroom. Touch the seats. It's free to sit in the car. You can sit down in the showroom. He can ask these people all kinds of questions. I feel so bad for car sales. <laughs> I feel bad because you just walk in there. So how much is that? You know you ain't buying nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and where did it come from? And how did it go? And what did you do? They gotta sit there and answer all your questions. We gotta wrap it up. Yes, Lord, I'm coming now. So what I'm trying to say is this. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is this. What, what I'm trying to say is this. Is that is that? And the reason I mentioned her is because I mentioned God first. Because you're going to leap over the world. After that, family, 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 family. If you don't have the family you need, which is, which I've seen in many of my days, pieces of my family, I don't even know how we connect. Okay, but if you have that member or members in in your family, here's where God actually works. All things work for the good of those that praise God. Remember that even the evil people, the ones trying to get on board you in business, we watch them fall and stumble. I'm not telling you just what the Bible or the Quran or the Torah teaches. I'm telling you what I live every day. Now, the reason I'm late here today is because I had to take an international call. What? Because I said in my mind, create a visualization. I think, I think, I think, therefore I am. I said last year, you know, I'm trying to get over to um, uh, Greece. Uh, I, I want to do a study of Greece. I'm studying the pillars and how they relate to standing stones and stone and all this stuff. So I'm saying, okay, let me get out to Greece. I need to get out to Greece and see what's going on and do this kind of thing. Now I'm a rap, okay? Look at the life. Don't work, live. Never work, live. I'm not working. I'm an unemployed black male right now. <laughs> you just don't. See it that way. You say, no, your camera's fine. Recording on. No. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. The truth is, I'm just like you. That's the truth. It's just that I apply these techniques, and now I'm who you think I am. Uh -huh. And so we'll come back on this. But what I, I wanted to say is that this woman right here 
is an international tour agent. Now, she looks like she's standing there all coldly, okay? But, at the, but let me say this. This woman books Big Daddy Kane, MC Light. She's had the careers of Fuji, Fat Joe. Uh, uh, I can even run down everybody. Maku, Mac, Lion, and Alive, Queen Latifah, everybody on that side, okay? This woman here, now the reason I point her out is two reasons. One, like I said, men, put your women in power. That's the new business model global. Global. The new business model globally is women are women. You don't put the man up front. After war and destruction, the world don't want to see men lead nothing. <laughs> put the woman up front because business is being conducted now, high business is being conducted by women <clears throat> women, women, this woman you need to bring her back so she can show women how to empower their men I am nothing without that woman right here <laughs> thank you uh, okay know that this is when you see KRS, when you leave from here and now, you see KRS being in power. You see KRS, uh, and when you see KRS, know that you're not seeing KRS. You're seeing the result of a team, the result of a family, the result of someone who cared enough about me to not say I'm making money with you, but I want to live with you. So when we live in together, well, as an MC, I say, well, look, uh, let's just book ourselves in Greece. There's like three clubs. There's one in Athens, one day there, there. Let's book ourselves in Greece so I can continue my study. Now, who books it? The wife does. The queen does. Why? Because our children are going with us as well. Why? Because we live this. There's no corporation here. It's unnecessary. This is the culture we're talking about now. This is beyond the world. This is God manifesting. The independent person doing what they, in other words, living, thinking, and doing what you live, think, and do. Most people do not do what they live, think. You think one way and do something else. Why? Why? No, let this be the last day that you think one way and do something else. No, think the way you think, and then do your thinking. Thank you. Yeah.